Hello there, so this is a quick video about how to set up the fan boundary condition as well as a radiator fan ba boundary condition uh, for an FSAE car. So the geometry has been created using space claim. We can see we've got a couple of components on the left hand side. Um, we've created an enclosure for the fluid domain, right? Um, but we've also created the radiator over here. So in this particular case, the radiator and fan have been lumped into a single component. We've actually got a name selection for the radiator face on the left hand side and a fan face on the right hand side. So we're going to be we're going to be applying a um, a face um, pressure jump through the system, so not a 3D pressure jump, right? Um, if we have a look at our system, we've also got a body of influence that I've used in the meshing side of things as well. But we've just got inlet, outlet. Um, we've got symmetry. So I've applied it to all the walls in. In a real case, you want to apply a moving wall to the bottom, um, symmetry on the side here, and you can just apply a normal wall on the other side. Um, got a fan wall, so the shroud around here, I've just given it as a wall boundary condition. Right? Again, we've got our chassis. We're going to be applying a rotating wheel around here as well, and I've got the rods. So going over to Fluent, uh, it's going to come up, and you can see everything's come in like this. So we've got our walls over here. You know, got our gecko turbulence model that we've turned on here and under our shell zones um, we've got the fan there's kind of the radiator fan right so you can see this is where it is here and it's a fluid zone as well as the actual enclosure itself just got a velocity inlet coming in as well now here are the next key components so it's the actual fan and the radiator face itself so normally these will actually come in as a wall you want to right click on that and uh, that you'll be able to select them as a interface Right, and then you'll be able, they'll come into the internal, and then you'll be able to select them over to a fan boundary condition. When we have a look at the fan boundary condition, we can see that it's automatically going to pick up the zone, and then we want to give it these uh, profile, polynomial profile for the pressure drum. Right, so this is an example of the pressure jump through the system. So this is just an example I built. Hopefully you've got your own data or you'll be able to build something up. Um, we're looking at what the velocity is through the normal, through the face. Um, and we've got the pressure jump, right? Again, using Excel, we can figure out what the uh, equation through it is. And we've got the coefficients over here. Now it's key that we have, we order it such that the constant is on the left-hand side. It's the first coefficient and the um, coefficient for the X value uh, goes onwards. If you look over at Fluent, again, 60 and then negative 2.5. Uh, it's important because you can actually have a look at the help to get a little bit more information on these boundary conditions. So if I'm in solution, boundary condition, um, there's the porous media, which we'll look at later on, and the fan boundary condition here. So it talks to you through the whole kind of process about how to actually model it through the system. And if you go to the very bottom, there's an actual example that shows you, you know, you've got flow rate through the system at a certain RPM. Um, we can then determine what the, um, the velocity is, delta P, and we've got an equation here, similar to what we've done before. Um, having a look at the radiator boundary condition, again, if we go back to the actual help, we can have a look at here. We can see what the, the velocity, the, the delta P equation is, and you can kind of read through it in this particular case. Um, I've created a um, just a small Excel sheet. So there's the phase permeability, the thickness of the model, and the pressure jump coefficient. So we've got the equation on the right-hand side over here. Um, we can see that the alpha value is linked to the um, to the velocity and the I think is the dynamic viscosity. So that's something that happens when the velocity is really small. So we can just um, put this value up all the way to something like a thousand. We know what the thickness is. Now, if you want to figure out what the delta p is, so it's equal to c two half rho v squared um, delta m. So again, you'll have to have data on what the velocity is, what the delta p is. Um, you'll be able to figure out what c two is, and then divided by m gives us what the uh, coefficient is. So again, apply that into our system here. Uh, we'll then be able to run our actual analysis. So what we can have a look at, um, so we can have a look at, say, what the pressure is on the actual surfaces. If you wanted to, we can also have a look at the velocity through them so we can have a better understanding. Um, we can start to kind of plot velocity on the surfaces to see what's happening. Um, and we can also have a look at, you know, things like, say, static pressure to see, to make sure these things are building up. Um, we can have a look at, say, velocity through these planes, again, looking at what's happening through the system. 
uh, as well as what the velocity vectors are doing through the radiator as well. So it gives us a good understanding of what the flow is running through the radiator and the fan in order to help actually optimize the flow through there. Uh, another thing we can do is actually start to plot our path line. So in this particular case, I've plotted path lines through the, uh, from the fan. So that's going um, past it. This is going into it. Uh, one of the cool things that you can do is that you can actually create a seam, right? So this creates a seam of both path lines. So you can kind of clearly trace back where the actual air came from to enter into that radiator. So we can then start to make improvements. In this particular case, we can kind of clearly see there's nothing coming from underneath here. So it means we can potentially start to change the geometry as well. Right? And then if we wanted to, again, we can add, you know, these additional seams. We can look at path lines, velocity on the plot, and kind of see what's happening around here as well. Um, then if we wanted to, we can have a look at some surface integrals. So uh, let's say we can have a look at the average area weighted uh, pressure through the system, right? So we see on the right hand side uh, what the average radiator and the fan pressure through the system is. So you can double check them. Um, we can also have a look at say what the average area weighted velocity through the system is as well. Um, or we can also do, maybe we can have a look at what the mass flow rate is through both of those components. So it'll give you a good understanding of what flow is actually running through the system. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good understanding about how to set up the boundary condition. Um, it's important to, to kind of to have the fan kind of modeled in there as well as the radiator. Um, and you can kind of see what's happening through there. Cool. Thanks for your time.